The Apple Vision Pro is both fascinating and frustrating. It's one of the most complex and high-end pieces of electronics I've ever seen. It has some incredible displays, and it's really building on VR and what the entire VR industry is doing. And Apple's also entering a whole new territory of spatial computing. But it's also a VR headset that still isolates you. I'm in the middle of Manhattan now, I'm surrounded by people, but in the headset, I'm on the surface of the moon, and it's easy to just be isolated from the world until I zoom back out. Using the Vision Pro is really a mixture of wonder and frustration. I was amazed at how well the eye tracking worked, which is how you actually select everything. Your eyes do the work of a mouse or trackpad. When you look at something, it gets selected, and then you do a simple finger gesture, and that's what chooses it. And really, that's all you need to navigate Vision OS, the new operating system for Vision Pro. You don't need VR controllers, you just need your fingers and your eyes to do a lot of the work. The downside is your eyes have to work really hard. My eyes felt strained after a while. So really that's why I'm fascinated by this thing. We don't typically see Apple come out here with slightly unfinished hardware, software that's really buggy, and an incomplete view of what a product can be. But the Vision Pro feels like it's all potential. The only downside, it's $3,500 and Apple doesn't quite know how to position it yet. Maybe this should have just been a developer kit because right now it feels like Apple is selling a beta product. And before you ask, no, you should not think about buying the Vision Pro. This is a product really meant for developers, creative professionals that are gonna be working in AR and spatial computing, and honestly, cloud chasing influencers. But you also shouldn't dismiss it entirely. It's really rare to see any company jump into an entirely new form of computing, certainly a company as big and influential as Apple. And what we're seeing here could eventually trickle down to cheaper products. And if this thing were lighter and cheaper down the line, I can see people being really interested in a spatial computing headset. So what is the Vision Pro? Really, it's a virtual reality headset. That's funny because Apple just seems to be allergic to the term virtual reality or VR in that order. They're talking about this as spatial computing, but this is a headset just like what Oculus and Meta have been developing and Vive and everybody else. But it's doing something a little bit different because it does have really high quality cameras that pass through a video feed of the real world. And this headset does a better job of marrying the real world and the digital world better, honestly, than anything else I've ever seen before. To be clear though, the Vision Pro isn't an AR headset, and that's something like the Microsoft HoloLens or Magic Leap's headsets. Those devices are interesting, but they really don't let you feel immersed as much as VR can. And what's special about the Vision Pro is they can kind of do both and do both pretty well. What also makes the Vision Pro different than every other VR headset we've seen is that it looks incredible. Apple is really going for a sort of ski goggle-like look here, and you really get that from this headset. It certainly looks more stylish, I'd say, than the MetaQuest 3 or even the 2. And what's unique is that it's all glass up front, there's a metal ring around the body, there's even a display up front, which Apple calls EyeSight. The whole point of the EyeSight display is to let you know if you're actually seeing the world while you're in the headset or if you're fully immersed in VR. And it's a way to communicate to people outside of you what you're actually doing in there. The Vision Pro ships with a single loop band that has like a stretchy, almost sock-like material to it. It feels really luxurious and I found it really comfortable to a point. I think after wearing it for half an hour, if you're watching a movie or something, it's just not quite there, which is why I typically opted for the dual strap, which has a strap on the top to just secure it to your head better and also to kind of distribute the weight better. What's also different about the Vision Pro is that it has an external battery pack and that feels distinctly un-Apple, I'd say. And it's one of those things that really makes it clear that this device is just generally built on compromise. The battery pack can get between two and two and a half hours of life, which could be better. I would like to see a lot more, but the annoying thing is that there's a cable you'll have to deal with. You'll have to put it in your pocket. It really restricts how you can use the Vision Pro at times. Now, I think given the amount of technology Apple shoved into the Vision Pro, it may be understandable why they didn't want to put in a huge battery. The headset features an M2 chip with an eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine for AI processing. There's also 16 gigabytes of RAM on board, along with Apple's R1 chip for processing all of the cameras and sensors needed to capture a feed of the real world. Those include a LiDAR scanner, true depth 3D camera, six world tracking cameras, two high resolution main cameras, four internal eye tracking cameras, a flicker sensor, an ambient light sensor, and four inertial measurement devices. 
I think most controversially, the Vision Pro ships with 256 gigabytes of storage, which is honestly criminal for a $3,500 device. You'll have to spend a couple hundred more if you want 512 gigabytes or $3,899 if you want one terabyte. And if you're actually gonna be using this thing to download a ton of apps and do some development, I would recommend going for you know one of the slightly higher models. Apple maybe played it safe a bit with the Vision Pro's battery and storage to fit in one of the best displays I've ever seen on any device. It's a micro OLED panel that packs in 23 million pixels. That's nearly three times the resolution of three separate 4K screens. That essentially means each of your eyes has more pixels in front of it than a single 4K TV. So that's pretty impressive. I found the Vision Pro screen to be a revelation. It's bright, it's incredibly sharp, it supports HDR, so it really gets those super highlight bright moments in video, but it can also show the depth of dark scenes as well. It supports up to 100 hertz refresh rate, which makes movement and scrolling through websites look really smooth, but it can also play back video natively in 24 FPS and 30 FPS, which means video looks nice and smooth and doesn't have the judder you see on a lot of 4K TVs, especially the cheaper ones. One of the first things I did with the Vision Pro was enable one of Apple's digital environments, which fully immerses you in a virtual space. So I went to the surface of the moon and it just looked incredibly believable and realistic thanks to the screen. The Vision Pro, for better or worse, is kind of the ideal device for escaping the troubles of the world. It was really cool to be sitting there in public and to open up a web browser to Engadget and just throw it up in the sky and have some pictures of my kids nearby and have a little sketch pad to my left that really showed the ideas Apple is working on here, even though it is kind of silly and maybe breaks the social contract a little. The Vision Pro also has built-in speakers, which sound pretty good, honestly. They sound like, you know, a decent pair of bookshelf speakers, but like some bookshelf speakers, they don't have much low end. So if you want thumping bass, if you want to hear the power of action movie scenes, you'll probably need to put on an AirPods Pro or even the AirPods Max. And I did wonder if that was Apple's plan all along. This is really the device that will make you want to get more Apple stuff. One of the big downsides to the Vision Pro is that it doesn't support glasses. So when you're ordering it, you'll have to plug in your glasses prescription and pay extra. It's $150 for prescription lenses from Zeiss. If you're buying devices expensive, I guess that's par for the course. The first time you put on the Vision Pro, it's kind of amazing, but you're immediately directed to scan your hands because it needs to recognize your hands and create digital recreations for things. And after that, you have to take off the headset and create a digital persona, which is this avatar that is a semi-perfect, really creepy recreation of yourself. And I will say, this is something that looked really bad initially, and it seems like Apple is aware of that. I've received some developer updates that have made personas look better. And these are also the things that are gonna be appearing in FaceTime calls when you're contacting anybody from within the headset. So FaceTime, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, if you're on a video chat, that's what people will be seeing. So it's a good thing Apple's aware that it looks kind of terrible to begin with. Once you get through all the initial setup stuff, you're just presented with a home screen. And that just feels kind of amazing because it's a razor sharp home screen floating in front of wherever you are. So it could be your living room, it could be your bedroom. That integration of the real world and the digital world just is so compelling here. And it kind of blew me away initially. The first thing I did was open up the Photos app because I was really curious to see what spatial videos looked like on the Vision Pro. I've been taking these over the past few weeks and I have to say, it is kind of mind blowing and you can't really get it from a video review, unfortunately, but looking at spatial videos, which are captured in 3D at 1080p and 30 FPS, so not a great resolution, but the 3D aspect of it is almost like capturing a memory in real time. I feel like Apple may have unlocked some sort of like special nostalgia machine here. Even panoramas look good and we all probably have a lot of panoramas built up over the years. They don't have any 3D or depth to them, but on the Vision Pro they can be enormous and that really gives you a sense that you're back in that location wherever you are. Within five minutes of using the Vision Pro, I already felt like a spatial computing expert. I think that's just a testament to how intuitive the entire interface is. If you've used an iPhone or an iPad before, you'll get used to it pretty quickly. The pinch gesture is what you use to accept things, confirm things. You can move windows around by pinching them at the bottom. You can rescale them by pinching them at the corner. And it's very simple to like create a virtual workspace around you. I'd say the one big problem with Apple's whole spatial computing thing right now is that the on-screen keyboard isn't very good. It's basically just good for hunting and pecking, but text input is a problem. And honestly, I've run into a lot of issues like this where it feels like Apple just rushed everything out the door and I've had to reset the Vision Pro multiple times. So 
This is the price you pay for being an early adopter for a product like this. When everything is working smoothly, it is kind of easy to accept Apple's idea of spatial computing. I would typically have in one space a web browser, maybe a separate window for YouTube, an iMessage window or something like that. And you can set these up and when you walk away and come back to them, they stay in place as long as you don't completely reboot the headset or unplug it from power. So what makes it interesting is that you can create virtual windows in different rooms and walk between those rooms and those windows will stay in place. So that's fascinating. And I hope Apple gives you the power to save those locations eventually, even uh, if you have to reboot. What's really interesting about the Vision Pro is the way it also juggles working with the real world and working with virtual worlds and also immersing you in entirely digital environments. So that environment I talked about before, being on the surface of the moon, that was amazing. And you can do that for different locations too, like Yosemite. You can also create lighting effects that just change the way lighting works in your room, which is kind of cool too. And just by twisting the digital crown, you can fully immerse yourself in those worlds. You can zoom back out to the real world. You can have a little bit of both. And that's a really interesting balance to have. These digital locations feel like baby steps into the world of VR, but it's interesting that Apple is making them at all. I've seen a lot of VR video in my time, but nothing has really delivered this amount of presence, which is the idea that you're actually transported somewhere else. The Vision Pro can be many things. It can be its own spatial computer, but it can also be a personal cinema. You can watch any video in a giant virtual window. There are even some virtual environments you can jump into. If you're watching something in the Apple TV Plus app, there's virtual cinemas you could be sitting in. It just really sells the idea that you're actually in a theater. And as a cinephile, somebody who watches way too many movies, I found that really interesting and just really compelling. While the Vision Pro is a capable computer in its own right, the thing I found most compelling about it, to be honest, was being able to take a Mac and blow up its screen into a giant virtual display and interact with that while wearing the Vision Pro. And it works on something even tiny like the 13-inch MacBook Air. I was doing it a lot with my 14-inch MacBook Pro and it really unlocks the potential for multitasking. You can make that window giant, you could still do all of your Mac work with it. But what's also really cool is that if you look over to Vision Pro window, your Mac's keyboard and trackpad also will control those too. So if you have a floating web browser window, you can plug in URLs pretty easily too. That's the sort of thing that I think will really enhance the way people work. And honestly, that alone may be a big selling point for the Vision Pro. Honestly, I'm a bit astounded by how well this integration works too, uh, because it's very seamless. Like if you see a Mac and you hit the connect button that's floating atop it, it shows up in a virtual display. It looks incredibly sharp. It scales very easily. There's very little latency between hitting a key and having it appear in the virtual window too. So even the technical accomplishment here, I think is pretty impressive. Honestly, this functionality is so good that if Apple just sold a $1,000 headset that only extended your Mac's display into virtual windows and didn't do anything else, I think Apple would have them flying off the shelves. As great as the Mac integration is, there are plenty of ideas that still don't feel fully cooked on the Vision Pro. I think the digital personas are certainly one of those. Another thing that doesn't feel fully cooked is gaming, and that's always been kind of a weak side for Apple. The Vision Pro has some spatial games that it launches with. It includes things like What the Golf and Super Fruit Ninja. And I just feel like developers will need more time with this thing to really deliver some good VR or spatial computing games. Now, just talking about everything the Vision Pro can do, the idea of enormous game windows and movie windows just sound incredible. But I think it's worth spending some time just discussing what doesn't quite work because there's still a lot of that too. I think at around 1.3 pounds, the Vision Pro is still pretty heavy for a lot of people. It takes some getting used to, it takes a lot of fitting adjustment with the headbands to find something that's really comfortable. And I found that even when I find a good spot, I need to take breaks like every hour or so while using it. Even during short sessions, the Vision Pro also needs a lot of eye movement and certainly a lot of focus to use too. This is a very bright display right up against your eyeballs. So I think like any VR headset, it's not something you'd wanna do right before bed or as you're winding down. And that's unfortunate. That's just the nature of a headset. Battery life is a bit of a problem too. It gets between two and two and a half hours, which is nice. But I found like when I get a really good creative flow, especially when I have the Mac connected, I sometimes just end up seeing the low battery warning and that really takes me out of my whole workflow. You can just plug in the Vision Pro, but then you have to be near an outlet. You have to stop what you're doing and get you stuff just for that. The Vision Pro also isn't great when you're moving around a lot. And all those videos you're seeing of people riding skateboards and driving while using the Vision Pro are kind of insane because the interface doesn't even work 
when you're doing that. So those are really done just for show. And hey, by the way, if you're considering this thing, don't do that. The cameras are great, but they don't capture the full resolution of the real world. They kind of block out peripheral vision and certain other things too. And the refresh rate is not as high as your natural eyes. So you will not be able to avoid obstacles or pedestrians or even cars if you're on a speeding vehicle. So be careful with this thing. It is wild to see how crazy people are being with it. And I have to say this, at $3,500, the Vision Pro is just way too expensive for most people. And this is a tough argument to make because I do think the technology in here is amazing. The screen is the best we've ever seen. There's a lot of groundbreaking stuff in here. Certainly, I can understand why Apple is choosing to make it so expensive. But Apple is also positioning it as a headset that people can buy too. It's in stores. There are a ton of commercials out there. It's wild to me that it costs the same as MacBook Pro, an iPhone Pro, and an iPad Pro all together. And for the vast majority of users, you'll get a lot more done with that trio of devices than the Vision Pro. I think ultimately the Vision Pro is an ambitious product, but it's also a flawed one. This is the sort of thing we'd like to see more from big tech companies. It would be really easy for Apple to coast on iterating on the iPhone and iPad and Macs and all their other devices, maybe have slight tech leaps to really excite people. But to do something different and risky and bold, to maybe try to avoid falling prey to the innovator's dilemma, that takes a certain amount of courage. And I have to admire that. So the Vision Pro is admirable, but you shouldn't buy it. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our reviews around VR headsets, computers, and all of those things. And if you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.